Okay, class. In the previous lesson, we explained how tensional forces lead to the formation of a rift valley. So this time, let us look at how compressional forces also lead to the formation of a rift valley. Remember, we said these are forces which push towards each other. They push, they don't pull. They push the crustal block towards each other. Uh, and how do they lead to the formation of the rift valley? Remember, due to compression, due to too much compression, they put this crustal block on stress. And finally, the lines of weaknesses or the cracks are formed within the crustal rock. And after forming the lines of weaknesses, continuous compression will force the side blocks to be uplifted above the general ground level, leaving the central block at a lower level, forming a depression called a rift valley. If you check on our diagram, this is a block A, this is block B. They are being pushed towards each other by the compressional forces. And after lines of weaknesses are formed, and block A plus block B will be forced to be uplifted at a higher level than the central block. And the central block remains behind, forming a rift valley here. Then differential uplift theory. Differential comes from different. This means that the uplift forces are not pushing upwards at the same rate. For example, when the side blocks when the side blocks on left and right are uplifted faster than the central block, definitely the central block which remains behind because it is pushed at a slower rate will form a rift valley. Check these are side blocks. These are side blocks. They are pushed upwards by faster uplift forces compared to the central block where the forces are weak. Therefore, uh, the, the, the part of the crust which is pushed upwards at a slower rate will remain behind forming a rift valley. This is a rift valley. Thank you.